I'm very grateful to be in a room with such wonderful people, each lugging their Maryland memory toy box and share it. And uh, I say lugging because they're all full, but they're not. Uh, reporter called me who wanted to interview and said, give me Maryland in two sentences. Well, I'm going to tear him a new one. <laughs> and I heard that little Maryland voices, she used to lean over so many times and go, hey, yeah, be nice. <laughs> so I said, yeah, I'll do that. I'll border down to two sentences and I got nuclear fission and moonbeams and tsunami waves I can throw in too. <laughs> and I said, well, I heard the voice again. That'd be nice. <laughs> I said, okay, I'll give you a dash of pure Maryland. We're doing a show in Germany and the promoters had gotten enamored of these wonderful luminaries that were going to attend the show that were somehow in their visions more highly placed than the little group of iconic horror people that we were. <laughs> now, they did not place us near the front. We were actually in the back room. Actually, we were we were in the back, we were in the back corner of the back room. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, that's not right. They should put Mary and some of the other uh, Texas, Texas luminaries closer up with the other bigger lights. And behind Maryland, <laughs> in the corner of the back room, were 323 cases of soy pot <laughs> that the restaurant people were storing there where they could run and get them and serve the people that were buying them. And Marilyn didn't even notice. And I noticed. And of course, I'm, oh, and I started going to my rant. And then I heard that voice again. And uh, a little boy came up to the table to get an autograph. And he said, wow, he stuck you back here with 323 cases of soda pop. <laughs> Now, a lot of people would have got upset. Marilyn turned around. 323 cases or Now, Marilyn, having known me for over 40 years, was perfectly aware <coughs> of my lifelong addiction to soda bottle. And she wheeled around without a moment's notice and said, Hey, you're not going to have to buy soda the whole weekend. <laughs> That was pure. <laughs> How do you not know about somebody like that? How do you do? We were doing a show in Houston, and we were going to set our little tables up and uh, sign our little office. And, and she also used to call me and say, You're going to do that show? I'm going to do that show. And she does that show. You're going to do that show? And I said, well, I'll do that show. You're going to do that show? Because we were fearful that we would get there with, without each other to pop each other up and it wouldn't be a lot better. So we went on there and uh, we got all set to sign on the autographs. And the movie was hard for two minutes. And all the people went into and see the movie. <laughs> and it's lonely in the lobby. <laughs> when there's no one in there. <clears throat> and Mary was heard me to the I'm sure glad you came. I said, I'm sure glad you came. <laughs> the little boy walked over from the candy counter and said, Look, the people in the movie going to be here, man. And of course, I sort of turned him to it. <clears throat> Mary grabbed my hand. I couldn't say anything about being twisted. <laughs> and she goes, Yes, sweet, you will. They will. They will. <clears throat> and we were sitting there and the tumbleweeds are coming through the box. <laughs> and I said, Well, wait till they come out. Get them when they come out. She goes, Yeah, I'm going to get them when they come out. And she said, <clears throat> hey, I don't want you. I said, what? He said, uh, what we're going to do later? And I said, well, I was wondering, what do you fear most in life? Death. And she said, no, I don't fear death. I said, well, what do you fear? She goes, she looked around at the big empty cavernous lobby, <laughs> and she goes, I fear a few years from now we won't be in Okemo, Oklahoma at the opening of 7 Eleven. Three people in the line. That's pure Maryland. 
I was like, yeah, I can see that. I can visualize it. She goes, well, speaking on that subject, what are you going, what are you going to say in my opinion? And I said, what? She said, what are you going to say in my opinion? I was like, well, well, let me think. She goes, I want to know because, you know, I love you, but sometimes you have to. <laughs> and my family and my friends, we don't want no surprise. <laughs> we don't want to know what you mean. I saw a friend one day. I saw a Mary Burns. I'm seeing the 1812 overture. Toy cannons, explosions, 2,000 pounds of confetti coming from the ceilings, 80 by 80 inch photographs of your entire life. Well, not that far. And <laughs> There's dancing men behind me with batons going, Marijuana! Marijuana! <laughs> I looked down and there was this horrified look in her face. And she said, Dad, yeah, I, I don't think my family and friends are going to go for that. What else you got? <laughs> but I said, What? Well, I got another song that I like. Now, Marilyn used to do this joke, and I'd always set the interviewers up. Because the joke was, I would go tell them, oh, you need to go ask Marilyn. Does her glass have to be or half full? Yeah, that's good. Oh, that's good. <laughs> and Marilyn would always do the joke, oh, honey, <laughs> my glass is always half full. <laughs> now, sometimes they would get it, and sometimes, <laughs> but it was always good to sit home. And so I said, well, I'm going to come along and I'm going to sing for you the parchment. That's one of my favorite songs, 300 year old Irish song about people that are going away, people that are traveling, people that have passed on. And she goes, I think I know that song. Sing it for me. And I started singing. Now, Marilyn, the kind, and gentle, beautiful person that she was, always aware of her surroundings, put her little arm and said, Yeah, no. <laughs> so I started singing, Lord. And up to the table, this little boy, this little beautiful 17-year-old boy wandered out of the bathroom. And he looks at me, oh wow, I'm in the bathroom. So he comes over to the table, and he's going to get a autograph. And she's listening to me saying, yeah, yeah. He goes, hi, sweetie. Yeah, yeah. What's your name? Uh, can you make it to Robert? No. <sighs> and now Marilyn takes her photograph, and she's signing, but it's kind of sideways, because she's trying to listen to the song. <laughs> <laughs> the T on two becomes like an F, and R and Robert is now an L. So it says, faux lover. <laughs> and I'd like to think that this morning, this was years ago, so I'd like to think that this morning that man is heard about Marilyn's passing. And he's gone, he's got that photograph out, and he's looking down, and he says, Folk lovers. <laughs> and his wife is looking over the and says, What do you matter? She's asking this child, Why does it say Folk lovers? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I finished the song, and she goes, God, that's beautiful. She goes, I promise you, sing that song. I said, Darling. If I had promised, all the money that in my poor life I have spent, I spent it in good company, and all the harm that ever I did, alas, it was to none but me. And all I've done for want of wit, to memory now I can't recall. So fill to me the parting glass. Good night and joy be with you all. Oh, if I had money enough to spend, and leisure time to sit a while. 
There is a fair boy in this town that surely has my heart beguiled. My rosy cheeks and ruby lips do blush for my heart's enthrall. So fill to me the parting glass and good night and joy be with you all. Oh, all the comrades there I had, they are sorry for my going away. And all the sweethearts there I had, they would bid me one more day to stay. But since it falls unto my lot that you will rise, and I cannot, just gently rise and softly call, good night, and join me with you all. So lift to me the parting glass, and good night, and join me with you all. Marilyn.